Hi there, I'm Brad with Splash Damage Tech, back at it again with another video on this brand new Barnes & Noble Nook Tablet 10.1 inch. Last time I did a quick unboxing and hands-on, now it's time to start heating it up, so let's get to some benchmarks. Here's a quick reminder of the specs that this new Nook Tablet is running with. We've got a MediaTek MT8167A with quad-core ARM Cortex-A35s at 1.5 GHz with a PowerVR GE8300 GPU with 2 GB of RAM. It has 32 GB of eMMC storage and a 10.1 inch 1920 by 1200 IPS panel. First, we'll start with Antutu, a classic Android device benchmark. As you can see in the video, which is sped up to 1200 frames per second, and no, I'm not kidding, it re it's really struggling with the 3D benchmarks. In real time, these scenes look like a slideshow. I actually ran this twice to see if this, this was a different test than I was expecting. It eventually finished, and a final score of 40,702 puts it among the lowest of devices out there. Don't worry though, the horrible 3D benchmark experience here doesn't quite rule this tablet out for games. I've got another video coming up where I play some casual couch titles and some time wasters as well, along with some more demanding titles just to see where the limit is. Up next is the Geekbench 4 benchmark. It's popular because it's cross-platform. You can run this benchmark on nearly any kind of device to get some relative metrics about general performance of your devices. For this test, I ran Geekbench on four devices in addition to the Nook Tablet 10.1 inch. Those devices are my current desktop computer, a Ryzen 3 2200G with 8GB of 3000MHz DDR4, my current laptop, an Intel i5 6200U with 8 gigabytes of DDR3, my current everyday cell phone of choice, the Blue Vivo 11, with its octa-core Cortex A53s at 2 gigahertz with 3 gigabytes of RAM, and a higher-end cell phone with a broken screen, my Yahweh Honor 8 with its Kirin 950, an octa-core big little CPU with 4 Cortex A72s at 2.3 gigahertz and 4 Cortex A53s at 1.8 gigahertz with 4 gigabytes of RAM. With a score of 489 single core and 1185 multi core, this performance in Geekbench mirrors the result from Antutu. It's really low. Hopefully, the everyday performance doesn't reflect these results. I still have hope. Next, since I was already in Geekbench, I decided to run the battery benchmark for a short period just to get a rough feeling of battery performance. The 1746 score here actually puts it closer to the middle in terms of battery longevity according to the Geekbench browser. The relative score here estimates the battery life to be somewhat around the battery life of an iPhone 7, a tad better than a third gen iPad, but a good bit below an iPad mini. I'll have to run this tablet through some battery life tests in an upcoming video. Long battery life was one of the things I was hoping for when I picked this tablet up.
The last benchmark I ran is the browser-based benchmark by Google, Octane V2. I also ran this benchmark on the same devices I used before, as well as an additional Chromebook device that I'm hoping this tablet will replace for couch surfing. That Chromebook is an Asus C201, which is running a Rockchip 3288C with four ARM Cortex-A17s at 1.8 GHz with 4 GB of RAM. This is starting to get repetitive, but the low score here was expected. A 2641 ranks this as one of the lowest performing Octane V2 scores that I've personally seen on a device. This, this isn't looking very good. That wraps it up for the benchmarks on the Nook Tablet 10.1 inch. If you found this useful, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more about this brand new Nook Tablet. I've got some accessories on the way, a casual and not so casual gaming video, and a full review coming soon. That's all for this one, so thanks for watching and have a great day.